This is the last video that you need to watch in order to understand the dependency injection. Welcome back to Nest.js full course where you can learn Nest.js from zero to hero. Okay, as the name of this video implies, we're going to talk about the dependency injection in this episode. So let's start with an example here. Let's say we have a controller for real estate properties. We we'll just call it property controller. It has four HTTP endpoints inside it and each one is mapped to its corresponding functions. So one important thing here is that we should not implement the logic of these four functions directly inside the controllers. Instead, we should create another class, which we're going to call it property service and move the logic of these functions into that service. So you might ask why we should avoid putting the logic of these functions directly inside the controllers. This has two reasons. The first one is separation of concerns. Controllers in Nest.js are designed to handle the incoming request. So business logic, validation, and data access should reside in separate services. This actually keeps your controllers clean and focused on routing. The other reason is maintainability. When your business logic is spread across your controllers, it becomes harder to find, reuse, and test. So by centralizing the business logic in services, changes can be made in one place and applied throughout your application. So with these two reasons in mind, let's go and create another class for the user service. So first let's create it in our diagram. Let's just copy the property controller and paste it here and just rename it to property service. And we need to remove the get and post and patch from the functions. So now in the find all function of the controller, we just need to call the find all function of the property service. In the find one, we just call the find one function of the property service. For the create function in the controller, we just call the create from the property service. And for the update, we just call the update from the property service. Now our controller is dependent on the property service. It means that the property service is a dependency in the controller. So now let's get back to the VS Code and create the property service in our project. Back to VS Code, here in the property module, let's create another file for the property service. So here I'm going to call it property.service.ts. And inside it, we need to export a class and we name it property service. Keep in mind that we can easily create our services with Nest CLI, but here let's just create these services from scratch. So inside our services, let's create a find all method. We don't want to put anything inside them. For now, just define the methods inside the property service. The second one is find one. We're going to have have a create method and also a update method okay so now inside the controllers we need to call these functions from our services so now the property controller needs to have an instance of the property service so here let's just create an instance of the property service so we're gonna have a property service which its type is property service class and then in the constructor we need to create an instance of the property service. So this, that property service equals to new property service. So now the property service is a dependency for the property controller. It means that the property controller cannot work correctly without the property service. So here, as you can see, the property controller creates its own dependency, but this is not the right way that we do in Nest.js. In Nest.js, instead of letting each class to create its own dependencies, we use dependency injection. So let's put a comment here, don't create your dependency. Instead, use dependency injection in Nest.js. So we're going to go back in a minute and use the dependency injection to create the dependencies for the property controller. But for now, here in the find all function, we can use this that property service and then call the find all function of the property service. Here in the find one, we just return this that property service dot find one. Okay, let's put just a return here. Of course, we need to pass the ID, but for now, let's just leave it as it is. We're going to go back and fix that. Again, in the create method, we just return this that property service that create function. And for the update, we just return this 
dot property service dot update okay so now we have moved the logic of these functions to the property service so now let's address our problem here we should not create the dependencies of each class directly inside that class instead we need to use dependency injection as i said so in order to understand the dependency injection first we need to understand a concept named inversion of control so what is the inversion of control normally a class would create its own dependencies just like we do here but with the inversion of control an external entity like the framework takes the control and creates the dependencies for the classes so here instead of creating the dependencies in the constructor we need to take the dependencies in our constructor so here in the constructor we need to take an instance of the property service so we're gonna have our property service which its type is from the property service class and then here instead of creating a new instance of the property service and set it to the property service member of the controller we just say that this dot property service and set it to the property service that we've got from the parameter of the constructor so in this way the dependencies of each class must be created outside of the class and then passed to the class by its constructor so now the property controller doesn't create its own dependency it actually takes the dependencies from the outside what makes this code really better is that if we have an interface here and let's call it service and it is going to have a find all method a find one a create and also an update so now here in the constructor instead of getting a property service instance exactly of type property service we're going to get an instance with type of the service interface so as you can see we don't have any error here because this service interface here satisfies the property service it has all the method inside the property service this actually implements the true inversion of control so what's the benefit of using this it leads actually to loser coupling and easier testing so consider this situation the property service dealing with the production database so it searched and create and update the data inside the production database so let's say that we want to test our application we have another database for testing it contains actually the testing data or better to say the fake data so when we are going to test the property controller we're going to create another service for testing that has all these methods inside it but this time the testing service deal with the testing database so now since the testing service satisfies this interface we can actually pass it to the property service parameter of the constructor and now our controller work with the testing property service but if we set the type of the property service in the constructor exactly on the property service class we can't pass the testing property service to our constructor and this leads to harder testing but this technique also has some downsides when we are going to create the property controller first we need to create an instance of the property service and then pass it to the constructor of the property controller for example imagine that property service is dependent on another service for example a repository service first we need to create an instance of the repository service and then create an instance of the property service with that repository service instance and then we can create the property controller with the property service instance okay it is really hard to manage our code in order to handle this problem dependency injection of the nest.js comes through so what is the dependency injection in nest.js for example here let's say that we want to create an instance of the property controller with the dependency injection we don't need to create an instance of the property service outside of the class manually and then pass it to the constructor of the property controller dependency injection system of the nest.js will do that for us we just need to declare the dependencies of the property controller so here we don't need to create this interface and we don't want to manually initialize the dependencies in the constructor here we just need to tell the nest.js that this class is dependent on the property service nest.js automatically creates the property service instance and inject it to the property controller also we don't need to create the property service member and all we need to do here is to put a private 
property service and this will create a property service member for the property controller class as you can see now we can access to it through this that property service and as i said we don't need to worry about reading this dependency outside the property controller and pass it to the constructor the dependency injection of the nestjs will automatically do that for us so now let's go back to the diagram and see how dependency injection actually works so in nestjs we have something called dependency injection container so it is dependency injection container okay so when the application runs it looks through all classes in our application except for the controllers and lists all dependencies of each class inside a table and then when the application wants to create an instance of the property controller it looks through the constructor of the property controller and it sees that the property controller has a dependency here property service so it's create a instance of the property service in the dependency injection container and if the property service is also dependent on another class it also create that dependency in the dependency injection controller if, for example let's say that the property service is dependent on the property repository class it also creates an instance of the property repository class and then pass it to the constructor of the property service and create the property service instance and then it passed the property service instance to the constructor of the property controller and create a new instance of the property controller class so these dependent of the property controller class will be kept inside the dependency injection container and then if another class needs the property service it doesn't create another instance of the property service it just passes the existing property service instance to that class so it avoids creating duplicate instances in our application and that will actually improve consuming the resources of our server so actually this is how the dependency injection works in the nestjs so now that we understand the dependency injection let's remove the property service that we have created from the scratch in our property module and now let's create the property service with the nest CLI so here I open up the terminal and I'm gonna say nest G which stands for generate and then s which is for service the name of the service which is going to be property and then dash dash no spec which means that we don't want to create a test file for our service so as you can see it creates the property that service for us and also update the property module so now let's go to the property module you can see it registers the property service inside the providers list of the property module so in this case we need to register these services in the providers list of the immediate parent module which is now property module and then if i go to the property service you can see it creates a property service class for us and mark it with the injectable decorator so this injectable decorator here means that this property service class should be managed by the nestjs dependency injection container so if other classes depends on this property service nestjs can automatically create an instance of the property service and then inject that to that classes for example here in the property controller you can see we have a dependency here of the property service so here as you can see it complains about that the property service doesn't have these methods so let's get back to the property service and quickly create these function so we're gonna have an async function find one let's just copy that find all and also create and the last one is update Okay, so if I go back to the property controller, now you can see it doesn't have any error. So yeah, that's it for creating a service. We need to register it in the immediate parent module in the providers list. And also we need to mark it with the injectable decorator in order to be managed by the dependency injection container of the NestJS. Now we can just declare the dependency here in the constructor of the dependent class, which in our case is the property controller. That's it for creating a service in NestJS. So yeah, that's it for this episode. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about how we can use type ORM for persisting the data in databases in our application. Also, in the upcoming episode of this tutorial, we're going to talk about how we can integrate the Prisma, Drizzle ORM, and also Mongoose in our NestJS application. So if this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please support me by subscribing to the channel. Actually, this gives me more energy to create such a free tutorials for you. So stay tuned for the next episode of this tutorial and have a nice time. Bye-bye.